Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're going to have a technical seminar covering the GM Hydromatic four-speed transmission used in the Silver Clouds and the early post-war cars. We're going to service it and we're going to take the valve body, the little control unit, apart and I'm going to discuss how it works. I'll, sh I'll do some air checks and I'll show you how things kind of work inside. All right. There's no gasket on that? No, that doesn't hold any fluid. Yeah, it it's not supposed to be wet. George? The fact that it is wet, is that a bad sign? Well, a lot of the under the car is wet. Right. right. So, if your car's, your Rolls Royce is not leaking, you better check the oil. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Anybody in the club knows that. <laughs> I think it's on film. That's alright. We do have some sort of legal disclaimer on these, right? Okay. Well, after you service mine, it hasn't leaked anymore. Oh, good. Not at all. I, I always hesitate to say stuff like that. Yeah. Ever since, it works great. And then you got to knock on wood. There's that drain plug. What How is, long have you had that tool, Ronnie? This tool, I don't know, 20 something years. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, what about a gasket for that drain? That it has a copper washer. Okay. Yeah. And I generally look at them, they look good, and I put them back on. Oh. Uh, a lot of engineers think you're supposed to replace that every time, which is fine. Most of the time. There we go. Now we're going to drain the torque converter. Is there a separate filler for the torque converter? No. Generally, when you refill them, like I said, they hold about 12 quarts normally. Uh, I usually put about 8 quarts in, start it up, okay. run it, and then just keep adding it until it reads on a dipstick properly. Okay, so if somebody doesn't have that tool, just a big screwdriver is what they could use with the teeth? Yeah, you can use around. a screwdriver. Yeah, you can use a screwdriver against the housing, yeah. And you did that because you wanted to get that hole at the bottom so it'll drain out. That's what you did? Right. I got the hole at the bottom so it drains, right. And obviously since I had to turn it so far, it must have been right there. And I had to go all the way around to get to it. What happens if you turn it the other way? Like it won't hurt anything now. I see. Uh, a lot of cars with uh, multi-cams and timing chains, you don't want to go backwards. Yeah. So just to get real foundation. Yeah, but this is a gear driven cam, so you're not going to need any of this. Put the strain plug back in, and then we'll pull the pan and the side cover. Does the tool that opens that up come with the kit that's in the car? Ah, that's a good question. Here's your drain plug tool. This is Brit tool. This comes in some of the tool kits. I don't know which years. This opens a drain plug, this opens a radiator cap on a lot of cars. This actually fits in the brake accumulator. The adjuster tool, which is this gizmo. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you've got that in your toolkit and wonder what it does, that's, that's what you adjust the front band with. Every toolkit I've seen has one. Yeah. Mm-hmm, I should. Most of the ones I've seen in toolkits are C's though. Yeah. Let me take it apart here. This one gets used a lot. So you can see that's a pretty heavy duty spring that makes this washer move. So you're actually, when you're cranking that, you're applying the band and it has, you know, with that kind of pressure. While I'm doing this, if you can get your camera up there and see this, what you're going to see, this is the throttle valve <laughs> linkage. This is, so this is your actual, hooks up to the gas pedal, that's what goes back. And you can see that there's a bunch of play in it, first of all. See all that? So he's getting like a quarter throttle before it even starts to move this thing back here. It's just amazing, and that's right in here. That's is that play because it's wearing, or just wear, it's just wear? wear uh, yeah, usually, yeah. It's, uh, and that's your throttle valve, that's the uh, 
the part of the control valve that tells it how much load you have on the engine. How would you remove that plate? You would have to take the linkage apart and rebush it or engineer something to, to take that play out. Are you going to do that on this car? Uh, I'm going to fix that before I'm done with it, that's for sure. Today we're not going to do this complete operation. I'm going to show you how the bands are adjusted. We're going to take the valve body off, uh, disassemble it, and look at it. Uh, and then I'll, sh I'll do some air checks and I'll show you how things kind of work inside. An air check when you're rebuilding transmissions means that you're going directly into a port that is normally fed with hydraulic pressure and you're using air pressure to simulate without, you know, having the thing running. You have to compensate because of the compression of the air versus fluid? No, you're just seeing if it works. So, in other words, if the bands move and they grab, then it's good. If you can hear a clutch apply, you can't see the clutches. They're inside the drums, but you can hear them when they go pop. And and you you check. They do it. They do leak checks too. If you have big air leaks, and you probably have a seal that's bad. Shift is. They call it a propeller shaft. And, and what's funny is that's not called a differential, the back part. It's the final drive. This unit back here, uh, on the American cars, they don't have this big unit that uses this transmission. They do have a, a housing here because that's where the reverse uh, clutch is on this. Uh, but this is the, the braking part of the braking system that that runs off the transmission. This is your, your your servo, that's a dry clutch in there that is mechanically applied and makes the master cylinders back here apply. These all these linkages. So that earlier discussion about converting, uh, all that stuff has to go away and you have to convert it to total hydraulic. And normally they'll put a booster down here. Cloud series, was there any changes in this transmission? Uh, not many that I know of in the cloud. I know in the R type they did, in the Mark VI, or when they first came out, they, they changed some of the valving. Uh, plus, the R type has a pump that comes off back here, too, that runs that rear shock system. Uh, I know they changed bell housing covers to get more cooling. Some of them had a little scoop, um, but as far as the technical changes in the transmission, I do not know. Uh, the, the transmission seems to work, this tra particular transmission, in the V8 models, the Cloud 2s, 3s, uh, S2s, 3s, they, they seem to shift a little bit harsher than the 1 series with the 6 cylinder, which I think has less torque, and I think that's part of it. It has to do with the torque. But the, the Cloud 1s and S1s seem to shift a lot smoother. <clears throat> Almost there. <clears throat> All right, there's the pan. And I don't think Bob has put maybe a couple hundred miles on, maybe 500. And as you can see, there's goobers in there. And this is kind of a gritty brown stuff. This is usually clutch material. And it's not the end of the world. Uh, you, normally you will see some sludge and sediment and stuff like that. If you see uh, gold color, colored metal in there, that's not good <laughs> because that's bushings that are going bad. Um, but the way the thing was shifting, yeah. you know, it was, it was working those clutches a little bit too hard. So. Yeah, that's why I only put 500 miles. Right, right. We'll get it working good. There you go. You can see some more, uh, some more stuff oh yeah. there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, you can see one little piece of metal, but it, really, it's not that bad. Don't get too panicked if you see gray sludge and all that. It's normal. 
Um, there's a better picture, huh? So, okay. So as you can see, this is the filter. It's metal. You just wash them, blow them out, put them back in. This does not have a replaceable paper filter like the 400 models. Uh, and you see it has two holes. It has two pickups here. This front pickup goes to, there's a big pump in the middle uh, on the center up here. That's the front pump. So that, that has to do most of the work on the, on the uh, transmission. This is for that governor. This is the pickup. There's another pump. Uh, I'm going to have to get the parking brake off on this um, so I can turn the drive shaft. But this goes to the governor. It pulls fluid so it can do its own separate pressure building according to the speed of the car.